opportunity for me to say thanks, Jason. Yeah. And for inviting me to come sing some songs. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> anyway, about my drive, obviously I made it home. Does anybody want to know, like, was it ACDC? Yeah. Right, that was a good one. Yeah, this, what other? Anybody catch any other? Pay the teller? No. Turn around and rat. No. Yeah. yeah. Rat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm going to incorporate, incorporate that into the story for now. <laughs> Thanks. I'm just realizing that the, the next song I was going to do is not 100% my own. So I'm just like, think of something quick. So... Maybe like you wrote it with someone, or...? It's a Rumi poem, translated by Coleman Barks, messed with by me, put to music by me. But it's not, so this one is 100%. for air, uh, and I booked um, like an overnight at a retreat center, and I was going to meet up with all these musicians and jam with them, and I got to this retreat center, and they had like disappeared, they like totally blew me off, and uh, it was beautiful, and I went down this hallway, like this really old Shaker building, and um, as I approached my retreat room, it smelled like roses. How many of you have ever just like uncanny, like from nowhere, right? You smell the roses and you know it's like pure magic going on, right? How many of you? Yeah? Like, there's got to be more of you. Anyway, it's happened to me just two, two, maybe three times in my life where I've been doing something and all of a sudden I, I know for sure it's like some entity is here, right? So that's what happened with the song, was uh, these, these musicians weren't there, but it ended up being better because I really got to be with myself. And so this is the song that came out, and um, I'll do my best with it.
won't find me this time. I'm safe in the garden. Finally here. song that seems to like put me in a trance, like it brings me in and, I don't know. Yeah. Your voice is, you look through it, so I think the adjective might be. Say that word again? Is it mellifluous? Mellifluous. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Woo. It's smooth and, yeah. Yes, I'd like open, pointed chord strumming pattern. Obviously, a lot of passion too. Yeah, putting your eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've been playing since I was really little, and um, when I was maybe you know eight, nine years old, I started playing um, an instrument that looks like a guitar. It's a Colombian tiple, and um, I learned Colombian folk songs. And um, my mother would have her friends over for tea, and she'd make me perform in front of her friends. And um, so there's pros and cons to that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the good side is that I'm, I'm usually not very um, shy about sharing my music, but it's been decades of kind of wondering, like, what am I doing up here? Because like, I would, I would see her friends, you know, and some of the friends were like totally not into what I was doing, you know? But then, you know, there'd be like, the polite friend, you know, and I don't know, I, I could tell as I was singing these Colombian folk songs that um, there was just a lot of different people listening and it made me curious. So, um, and what I spent most of my life studying is uh, transpersonal developmental psychology mm -hmm. and I'm a drama therapist mm -hmm. and I, um, I've just spent my life kind of studying what it is to to be present or alive. I can't say that I feel masterful in being present and alive. I'm very conscious that I struggle with that, but it's it's a cool thing to study. And so with my music, it, it's been a, like it, this question, you know, what am I doing? What am I doing sitting up here and playing this with you all here? It's a cool inquiry. Um, and in my house where I grew up, we were, we were very emotional. And uh, I was born in Colombia, so I never understood in New England that people would get sent to their rooms for being emotional, whereas in my family, we just chuck something across the room and, <laughs> you know, and we would raise our voices and we would get through it and we'd chase each other around and scream and uh, we never, the four of us kids, like never did anybody ever get reprimanded for having strong emotions. And so this was a really rough emo like waking up for me in, um, I mean, I think it was only in my 40s that I started considering that maybe <laughs> I should rein in my emotions just because I was getting very misinterpreted constantly um, in New England. And people would tell me that I was angry and I would, 
you know, I, I study psychology. I mean, this is, you know, I would go and I would study, like, am I angry? And I would just come up with, like, I'm so not, but, but I'm passionate. But in, in, a, in a culture where um, it, there's good emotions and bad emotions and ones that you have only in your room by yourself, and I wasn't raised like that. They were all fine, you know? So, um, so that's kind of was something I explore also in my music is the dynamics, the feelings and um, the different dynamics because from my point of view as, as a psychotherapist, like we all have all these emotions. And uh, so many times when I work with people, it's like they weren't allowed to feel their emotion. And so there we are, like, yeah, you can feel your emotion here. It's fantastic. It's great. And, and then um, <laughs> if we just let ourselves feel our emotions, we'd be like in a good space. So um, I think that's all I want to say for now. <laughs> Here's to emotions. <laughs> so uh, before I moved to Vermont, I lived in, by God, West Virginia. <laughs> by God, West Virginia, almost heaven. Almost heaven. Yeah, and very briefly, it was open for business guys catch that? All the signs when you um, came into West Virginia, they used to say wild and wonderful, and then it was like, welcome to West Virginia, open for business. And I was like, oh my god, that's horrible. So finally they went back to wild and wonderful. But funny enough, Maryland adopted open for business. I'm like, okay. Um, I think it was like a change of the governor. Like the governor okay. switched it up. It was, well, not necessarily, but this governor, and I can't even remember his name, but he, I'll, I'll figure that out for next West time I talk about it. Not open for business with that guy. Well, he really wanted it to be. So anywho, so I lived in Shepherdstown, which is this magical, sweet town in the eastern panhandle. Uh, and this is what this song is about. I'm gonna turn that off. Sorry. Thinking about Shepherdstown, my dark 
nights and my days sometimes they just fade away I'm thinking about shepherds tell my ladies and my babies my shepherds town oh my shepherds town Yeah, and there's that other one that's like... Isn't that uh, about Jamaica? I know. <laughs> yes. Um, what is that? Uh, like a bird, I slip through the through the night like a bird uh, and back to that place, the place that I call home. Did you ever hear that? Yes. I love that song. Is that Coretta that said that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think I know that song. Yeah. Oh, God, I love that song. I love that I love how free that song is. Yeah. Very free. Mm -hmm. Why? What was that out there? Well, I didn't want to interrupt this, uh, but, but yeah, I also have, I have a question. I love, I love everything you're showing us with, with your music. It's so awesome. Uh, what I really think is cool is the rhythm changes that you did, yeah. like in that song. And I was just wondering which part came first, the A part or the, the B part? The, you know what I mean? It's like starts off. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, what came first was Shepherd's Town, and then came My Ladies and Babies, um, and then Town Run. So the, the, the um, rhythmic evolution of the song was just really playful as I played with it more. So, yeah. Thanks. Playful playing song. It's a playful playing song, Shepherd's Town. And there's this really cool library in Shepherd's Town. If you're ever in West Virginia, there's two places that you should stop. You should stop in Shepherd's Town and look at the library. There's an elephant under that library buried. And then you should go to the Purple oh, Fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> and then you should go to the Purple Fiddle. I've played the Purple Fiddle. You've played at the Purple yeah. Fiddle? It's a great little place. Like, oh, that place. A real, a real there is. There's a real elephant buried underneath of this library, which is it's got like yeah, you just you can even look it up. Just look Shepherd's Town Library. Yeah, so a circus came to town, an elephant died in Shepherd's Town and they buried it and then in the middle of town, in the smack dab middle of the town, they buried the elephant. Then they built the library. Why wouldn't that be the monument? Not the like libraries underneath basement thing. Maybe like, there wasn't a good taxidermist in town. <laughs> yeah. What do you do with a jet elephant? For, for the basement of the library, so it's just conveniently located. Maybe. And well, you know, if I was an elephant, <laughs> uh, being buried under that library would be a yeah. beautiful yeah, place be cool. to be. Yeah. They made it the elephant memorial library. <laughs> <laughs> They say, like, you're supposed to put skeletons in, like, closets, but... <laughs> <laughs> now, can you sing a song about the elephant buried under the library? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yes. Improv. You're doing some improv about the elephant. Last week, that's improv night. We so wanted to improv. Do, it? We actually did watch it. Okay. I could totally yeah. bust that with that. I, I have a suggestion, Mr. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Jason. <laughs> What if at the end of one of these one time the participants were willing, you did a collaborative on-spot songwriting 
like you remember when you were little and you'd like you write a couple of sentences and then pass it to the next person and they would add on mm -hmm. and you go around totally. and it's just the way to wrap it up yeah yeah. yeah, you know, to me, like that sounds like a really awesome idea. It seems like there should be like a show based around that in particular. You know, because really? like, it seems like it could really like take off and people get into it and we should just give spend you a, some time on it. We should just give you a suggestion box and just have people put it in, in the end. Like five mics VT at gmail dot com. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that that works. Yeah, no, that's a cool idea, Cindy. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll play it. So, this song, I lived in Colorado for a little while and tried to write some Colorado inspired songs. So, this is about um, two brothers fictional story. Two brothers, they're driving around in a car, um, and, now let me, let me back up. It's basically about this brother who um, drives around looking for his brother that was swept up by a tornado. Um, but then what happens is the brother that's driving around looking for his other brother is actually the brother that died in the tornado. Mm -hmm. So he's like this lost soul, lost, ugh, lost soul traveling around all the Colorado mountain roads um, on a search and on a quest, but he's never going to find it because he's the one that's lost. And his brother's like living in some town or something alive. Um, sounds kind of sad. <laughs> but it's a happy song, so here we go.
Yeah, there's just many layers to that one key piece. Right. Yeah. Kind of layering going across the neck. Drop D yeah. is a lot open. Like totally. Like, to be more within it. I like moving across the neck a lot. Yeah. Writing. Nice. Yeah. I love the lines, don't let my elbows take me out on a bender. Yeah. He's going to stick with me for a while. Oh, yeah? yeah. Don't let it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I just... Sure. All right. I feel like there should be a way I should start these. I don't really know if there is. Um, I feel like I write songs in different, like, kind of places that I'm in at the moment, kind of in the spectrum being happy and sad and whatever I am in, but I still, I never know what the songs mean until they kind of come to me afterwards, I guess. Songwriting. A lot. Um, well, w when I was two, my father gave me a ukulele, and ever since then I've been playing instruments. Uh, there's no real time of what instruments I was playing. It was just whatever was in my hand. Uh, and I guess I was always trying to make music, uh, whether that be an actual song or just noises that sounded good to me. Um, but it was just, I kind of just made things as I went, and 
I guess I've made a lot of songs, but I don't always remember all of them. Yeah. Very cool. I was asking because you actually played at a benefit at the Brooks House. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, at that time, I asked him how many songs he had written, and you're like, I don't know, 20, uh, well, 20, uh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when you were interviewed by BTTV, they asked you about you know, your musician, what do you play? Your answer was pretty much the same. Pretty much what I wanted to get my hands on. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what your answer would be now. It was yeah. you know, 20 or 30 or a lot, six or seven years ago. Yeah, I, I don't. I never tried to perfect a certain instrument. It was just kind of fun to play with all of them and see which one I really enjoyed, and guitar, mandolin, ukulele, uh, whatever. I, the